very good morning students i heartily welcome all of you all and i hope you all have done well in the first year today we are going to start off with the third sem second year housekeeping syllabus and here goes with the lenin room which is unit 1 and uh, this is the first part of the lenin room operations that takes place in the five star hotels we will go into the details of knowing how a lenin room functions the layout of lenin room how does the purchase happen and what are the different types of items that comes under lenin and how are they segregated why how, why do we discard when do we discard and the other things is that what we learn today now what is a lenin this is a very familiar word that we had been coming across from so many years lenin lenin is a fabric that is launderable what do you mean by launderable anything that that can be washed and lenin is a launderable fabric that is used in a hotel and it is also a type of fiber which has got a natural origin so when we talk about lenin it is come from a flax plant and this is this has got a natural origin now what are the different types of lenin the lenin is divided into two types hotel lenin and guest lenin when we say hotel lenin all the lenin that goes into the operational areas and when we say operational areas the restaurants bar rooms and uh, public area toilets all these are called as operational areas including swimming pool because we provide towels also in the swimming pool so all the lenin that is used in the operational areas is called as hotel lenin and uh, the other category is guest lenin what do you mean by guest lenin all the fabrics given by the guest for washing or for dry cleaning or for pressing is called as guest lenin now under hotel lenin we need to divide subdivide the hotel lenin into again two categories first one is f and b lenin and the second one is housekeeping lenin now when i say f and b lenin all the lenin that goes into the restaurants multi cuisine restaurants your uh, uh, bar and things like that and the lenin that comes under housekeeping is your lenin that goes into the bathroom and the lenin that goes into the uh, rooms now these two should be well understood to maintain the stock so coming to the next category what is fnb lenin which all items comes under fnb lenin now fnb lenin consists of table cloth naprons frills buffet runners tea cozy base cloth serviettes chair covers cushion covers and slip cloths now you had been doing your practical in the first year so you are all quite familiar with all these types of uh, uh, lenin which goes into the restaurant table cloth napron frills buffet runners tea cozy base cloth serviettes serviettes you carry for, for your practical and the serviettes is mandatory for you to do any kind of service in the restaurants chair covers chair covers we use it in banquets we use it in the restaurants and cushion covers we use it in the uh, restaurants and we use it in the uh, rooms also and slip cloth see the thin cloth which is placed on the table above the table cloth is called as slip cloth now coming to the housekeeping lenin under housekeeping lenin again the, i am dividing the lenin into two categories the lenin that goes into the bed and the lenin that goes into the bathroom now coming on to the bed lenin the bed sheets bed spreads duvet duvet covers blankets cushions cushion covers mattress protectors heavy curtains and chair curtains if you all remember we have done the bed making and we all know what is a bed sheet what is a bed the duvet duvet cover blanket cushion 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 covers mattress protectors and the two types of curtains that goes into the room are 
heavy curtains and share curtains. So this is the linen that should be taken care by the linen room and laundry, both for washing and providing to the housemen for making up of the rooms is called as bed linen. So this is the basic responsibility of the linen room. But before going into the responsibilities of the linen room operations, let us first understand what are the different categories of F&B linen, bed linen and bathroom linen. Now coming to the bath linen. Now the bath towels, bath sheets, hand towels, bath mat, shower curtain, face towel and bathroom. Now we, uh, the only uh, slightly confused word here is bath sheet. But the other day I showed you the difference between bath towel and bath sheets are bath sheets are slightly bigger in size than the bath towel. Otherwise, we are quite familiar with the rest of the terminologies over here. Bath towels, bath sheets, hand towels, bath mat. Like the way how we use a doormat in our houses, there is a bath mat with the same Turkish material used near the bathroom door or near the bathtub. If, in case if there is a bathtub in the bathroom, the bath mat is used in the on the floor near the shower, shower or near the bathtub. And face towels are exclusively used only for wiping the face. Bathrobe is a gown sort of a thing which is hung on the ba backside of the bathroom door to for the guest to wear it after bath. So this is called as bathroom. And all the items that we are talking over here comes under bath linen. So quick recap of the F&B linen, uh, room linen and bath linen. So we are now familiar with all the types of linen. Now, there are two types of linen rooms in the five star hotels. Now, what do we mean by types of linen room? The way how the linen will be distributed to the staff or distributed to the floors. Based on that, the types of linen room will be categorized. The first one is centralized linen room. Now, what do we mean by centralized? The name itself signifies over here, it is centralized. The linen distributed from one particular place is called as centralized linen room. That means they have one common linen room and the staff should come to that linen room and pick up their linen. Linen room boy, who will take the linen in the linen cart and distribute to all the floors. But that is a central point where the linen collection and linen distribution will take place. So that is the reason we are calling it as centralized linen room. And the supervisor of this linen room will be the whole and sole in charge of the entire uh, stock taking of the linen room operations. Now coming to the second category, D, decentralized linen room. Now in this case, each floor will maintain its own power stock. These are replenished from one main linen room. Now here, just now I told you, uh, every floor will have their own power stock. So the housekeeping supervisor who is on the floor will be the in charge for their own uh, pantry stock because the linen is placed in the pantry and uh, the supervisor will be the in charge person for taking a stock of all the linen that is being maintained in the pantry and will give an update to the linen room supervisor there. So that is called as decentralized. Then what happens is the entire uh, responsibility is not falling on one person, the linen room supervisor, but it is being subdivided by, uh, the responsibility is being divided by all the supervisors and the final update will be given to the linen room supervisor who will in turn give the update to the executive housekeeper. So this is called as decentralized linen room. Each floor will maintain its own power stock and these are replenished from one main linen room. Now coming to the responsibilities or in other words, we call it as activities of the linen room. Now, what do we mean by activities of the linen room? Collection of soil linen, the linen which is being there in the pantries or in different areas of the hotel are to be collected by the linen room.
Next one, counting and sorting of the soil linen. The count should be taken and segregation and sorting of the different linen. Bed sheets different, towels different, face towels different, hand towels different, bathrobe different. So the counting and sorting of soil linen also is one of the major responsibility of the linen room. Third one is packing and dispatching of soil linen for the laundry. Now we are here in the linen room, we are only taking care of the uh, segregation, counting and collecting. But how do we wash it? We do not have the provisions for washing a linen room. So we, our duty is to dispatch all the soil linen or give the soil linen to the laundry. Now, receipt of fresh linen from the laundry. Laundry is washing it, ironing it, and then giving the fresh linen to the linen room. And we are maintaining, maintaining a receipt of the fresh linen in our laundry. Now, checking and sorting of fresh linen. Now, after the receiving of fresh linen from the laundry, once again you check and then sort the fresh linen. Because until unless we plan and we sort out the linen, it is difficult for us to uh, distribute and issue the linen to the staff. F&B linen in different almaras and uh, bath linen in different almaras and uh, bed linen in different almaras and always linen room should be, almara should always be labeled. Now here I would like to tell you an example of how a medical shop functions. The moment I ask for a particular tablet, medical shop person will not look for where the tablet is because all the medicines are placed in, in such a way where they are labeled and the person knows exactly how the prescription goes by and immediately the medicines are being dispatched to the customers. Similarly, there is no, there should be no time wastage by making people standing outside your linen room for issuing of linen. So here we call it as checking and sorting of fresh linen, storage of fresh linen, and distribution to the floors and other areas. As I told you, the linen need not be uh, taken by the houseman uh, alone. We have one houseman or we have one linen room boy who will take all the linen in the carts, in the linen room cart, trolley, and then distribute to all the floors so that their time is not getting wasted. Then the most important one here once again is stock taking for linen. The stock that is being uh, issued to us by the executive housekeeper has to be always maintained and the record should be updated as to if any linen has been discarded, if linen has been damaged, if, linen, if any linen has been uh, uh, you know, misplaced. So all this comes under stock taking. Then um, we have a separate topic called a sewing room but uh, some hotels will have the sewing room also inside the linen room. Uh, a, a part of the linen room will be given to the sewing room. Uh, when I say sewing room, here one tailor and one uh, sewing machine is being placed over there. And uh, the responsibilities of the uh, seamstress, and when I say seamstress here, the tailor is called as seamstress. And what are uh, her or his responsibilities? Stitching, repairing, monogramming of all the hotel linen and the last responsibility is discarding of the linen that is being damaged or that is being stained. So discarding is separate topic which I'll teach you in due course of time. So discarding this word we had always been using whatever we don't use in our house we keep discarding we giving it, we give it to our maids or drivers or whatever. So that is called discarding but discarding in five star hotels goes by a very systematic way uh, why, why is it should be discarded? How many items are being discarded? And what is the next procedure? I will tell you in uh, future classes. Next one, planning the linen and uniform room. Now uniform room is a separate topic which I'm not going to touch upon right now. Planning the linen room now. Now what are the points to be kept in mind while planning the linen room? The first one, has to be kept in mind is location. Which location has to be, has the linen room to be situated? How much of space is required? And how many entrances? Is it one main door, two entrances? How should the floors and walls be? The lighting and ventilation has to be kept in mind. The storage space, where should the soil linen area to be stationed? 
the lenin exchange counter like how we take the movie tickets when we stand in the queue similarly one main window where the lenin can be soil lenin can be given and fresh lenin can be taken so that is called as lenin exchange counter then inspection area one big table to open the fabric and see if any damages or any stains are there so that is called as inspection area then we have uniform storage area so here why i'm talking about uniform uh, also here is there are some hotels who does not have a separate uniform room uniform rooms and the linen room will be the same so that is one reason why i wanted to highlight this point over here so but there are some hotels where the linen room operations are different and uniform room is different so in case if there is no separate uniform room we will have a uniform storage area that means the staff uniforms will all be stored in one uh, corner area which is called as uniform storage area then we have guest laundry area but guest laundry area will not be mixed up with the uh, linen room because the entire laundry will be taken guest laundry will be taken care by the laundry department then we have a table and desk which is called as linen room supervisor desk so these are the uh, points to be kept in mind while ensuring that the linen room is been planned now how do we do the storage of linen it should always be covered the linen should always be covered irrespective of whether it's a fresh linen or a soiled linen so that it does not attract dust and the fabric is bound to maintain its shine and sheen at all points of time and it's also um, um, can be understood that Uh, the uh, spillages of any kind of other stains the fabrics will not get spoiled second point is they should be stored in cupboards with sliding doors majority of the linen rooms will have sliding doors where the linen is kept articles that are not in frequent use should be covered with the dust sheets in first uh, semester we have learnt about dust sheets and the items that are not been used very frequently should always be covered with a dust sheets and kept in one corner almara so that only when required we can take them out and when you open those things automatically those items will not will be as fresh as we have kept because there is no dust which has fallen on those articles next one is linen must be free from dust as i told you in the beginning itself no linen should be uh, with the dust because that is how the items will look fresh linen should be rotated on first in first out basis students this is a very very important topic when very important uh, point here first in first out so the first soil linen that has come from the floors should will be going to the linen room then to the laundry and la from laundry it will get washed and it will come back to the linen room and from linen room it will go to the pantry and from pantry it goes to the rooms so first in the first soil linen will be the first one to be used on the bed again after washing so that is the meaning of first in first out basis linen on shelves should have fold faces outwards linen on shelves should have fold faces out outwards what is the meaning of this over here now whatever you have folded see there is a kind of fold with open face and a closed face so the closed one should be facing towards the uh, uh, almara side because it is easy for identification and easy for counting also as well so when you remove it when you wanted to remove the linen it's easy for us to remove when you have a, a closed side that is called as a fold face to outwards then uh, this point we had always been following following right from the first semester heavier objects or heavier linen should always be placed on the lower shelves because it's easy to pick up and the uh, when by mistake in case if it falls also we will not be you know hurt by heavier objects falling on the person first of all we should ensure uh, to be careful while taking the items but then it's always suggested to have heavier items on the bottom shelves 
Now, Lenin exchange. We are talking about Lenin exchange. We just spoke about a Lenin exchange counter. So I gave you an example of a movie tickets, how previously when we used to stand in the queue and take movie tickets. So we used to, we, we used to give the money and the person that uh, person used to give us the tickets. Similarly, there are different types of Lenin exchange over here, which are categorized into four types. First one is fresh for soiled. What do we mean by fresh for soiled? You, the staff are giving me, imagine I am the Lenin room person. So the staff are giving me soiled Lenin and I am giving him fresh Lenin. So, so fresh for soiled soiled for fresh you are giving me soiled linen i am giving you fresh linen second category is set amount now every floor pantry by the way the number of rooms are being in each floor we have decided that a set amount imagine 35 rooms are there in every floor 35 into two bed sheets so 70 bed sheets at any point of time are there in the uh, pantry so there, I'm just giving an example to understand what do we mean by set amount. Set amount is a specific number of bed sheets will be given to the floor a houseman every day. So that is called as set amount. Third one is the supervisors will do give us a requisition and the banquet people will give us a requisition and the restaurant people will give us a requisition. And based on the requisition, Requisition is a document which comes in the store in form to the linen room and we put a tick mark there and we issue the items. So that is called as requisition. And the fourth one is topping up. Topping up is kind of set amount, but every now and then the supposing out of 70 bed sheets, coming back to the second example that I gave you set amount, Second, second uh, uh, category set amount. So we give every day 70. But in the fourth category, topping up is out of 70, in case if 20 bed sheets are left out in the pantry and only 50 bed sheets were used yesterday. So you are trying to bring it to 70 by placing only 50 bed sheets in the pantry. So that is called as topping up. So once again, fresh for soil, set amount, requisition, and topping up. So this is called as linen exchange procedures that are followed in the linen room in five star hotels. Thank you students. We will continue the remaining in the next classes. Thank you very much.